Well, Harold, were there uh, some insurers that were a little bit leery of the public, pub, public entities uh, going uh, with the, a little scared of the risk uh, with the advent of the uh, public entity tort legislation? Yeah, that, uh, that was one of the reasons that pooling really took off across the country. Uh, and it really had started uh, in 1972 in Texas when public entities in Texas were put under workers' compensation. And no one knew how to deal with, uh, with uh, organizations that uh, get shot at or shoot people or run into burning buildings. Yep. You know, those are, how, do you, how do you fund those kinds of risks? Or then when you come to the uh, Political Subdivisions uh, Tort Claims Act and the liability issues, you know, <laughs> could be rather blunt about it, uh, you know, uh, municipalities uh, are authorized to kill people. And we can kidnap people and hold them for ransom. Or we can arrest them and wait for their bail. But from an insurance standpoint, it was almost like, you know, wait a minute, we're going to be insuring people who kidnap people and, and hold them against their will? Uh, they didn't know how to deal with those kinds of risks. And we had uh, the new laws that were adopted oftentimes had exemptions or limits uh, that didn't apply in the private sector. And I think if, from what I've understood, the insurers were really suspicious of the tort caps. They didn't believe that the courts would uphold the caps on liability, that the most you could collect from a municipality would be $100,000 for an individual loss. A private, a private company had no such protection, but the courts throughout the United States sustained those limits. Well, how did the uh, traditional insurance company view us? <laughs> they thought we were a nuisance. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, I pretty much shared that view initially. I thought we were a temporary expedient, that pretty soon they would come around and understand that, uh, you know, this is something that can be managed, it's something that can be funded, uh, and that after a little bit of shakeout, they would come around to understanding and just kind of tolerate us uh, until they came to that. But, uh, pooling, those involved in pooling, the boards uh, and staff, uh, began to see some things that I think the private insurance market had overlooked about dealing with uh, public entities and became very successful. Well, what is, why do they, go ahead. I want to comment on this. Harold has never heard this before, uh, but I remember reading uh, in one of the uh, insurance periodicals where Harold was interviewed and Harold referred to our operation, I think, as uh, alternative insurance. Mm. <laughs> and uh, some of us in the staff said, that's not right, we're here to stay. <laughs> we're committed to stay. <laughs> we want these, we want to continue yeah, to board. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we did, yeah. <laughs> well, where did, the, where did the word pooling come from? In the <clears throat> uh, financial uh, sector of the economy, which would be primarily banking, <clears throat> investments uh, and insurance. Uh, you have mutual insurance companies, you have investor-owned insurance companies, you have reciprocal insurance companies, you have captives, you have risk retention groups that all have very specific meanings within that industry. Uh, pooling goes along with it coming out of the Interlocal Cooperation Act is that we're going to pool our funds and pool our risks together. So pooling kind of became a, an identified term to go with the public entity market to separate our identity from risk retention groups or captives or mutual insurance companies which are fairly similar uh, in their structure. So, Well, Harold had mentioned, oh, some some challenges as far as the, the, the newness and maybe apprehension. Were there other challenges that you all faced in the beginning, Stephen? I think from the beginning, credibility was always an issue uh, because we were new, as Harold said. Uh, and when you start a new program, you have to earn your spurs, so to speak. You have to prove to our customers, which were cities and towns, that we were gonna be around next year and the year after and the year after. And uh, so you had a, a credibility issue, but I'm here to say, and Harold I think would say the same thing, uh, the fact that Don Ryder 
uh, executive director of the Municipal League, was behind this and uh, supported it. That gave us a, a good leg up on credibility because we could use the, the Oklahoma Municipal League as, a, as someone who said, what they're doing is good and stand behind us. Uh, then you, you had the issue that uh, credibility from uh, insurance agents across the state. Uh, many of them didn't want to see us succeed because they liked representing the, the, cust I mean the, 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 the business products that they had represented year in and year out and got sizable commissions for doing such. And so uh, they would shoot at us regularly as being uh, a Johnny come lately, so they're here today and they'll fold tomorrow. Uh, and they had the benefit of, of telling city councils, and they're absolutely right about this, that the insurance products that they were selling were backed up by the state guarantee fund. So if a particular insurance company would fold, the, uh, the, the, uh, the people who held the policies could go to this guarantee fund and make certain their claims were paid. Well, we were exempt from that fund. We didn't have that background. So uh, the, the full faith and credit of Oma Mag was our faces, you know, and that's about it. Uh, so there was always that uh, initial problem, but over time, as I, as I mentioned before, we earned our spurs and, 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 and proved to people that, uh, that we were credible and uh, could pay the claims and be open for business and, and never mi miss a, a call for a claim or, or providing uh, defense for litigation, et cetera. So it took time, but here we are 40 years later, and I think we've proven that uh, we're here to stay.